Hello and welcome. We're looking at square root extractors today. What the purpose is and why we need them. Here in my setup today, we have a transmitter that is looking at flow through an orifice plate right here. Okay, orifice plates are defined by the, uh, the restriction inside them. Oftentimes they'll have a little tab that comes up and will tell exactly what the restriction size is. And you can do out your calculations that way. But without doing the calculations, we can simply run our transmitter, put our flow at a known flow rate and set that to our 100%. So we've already done that and we have done a sensor input so that we can uh, at 10 gallons per minute we get 20 milliamps out. So here we have our calibrator which is also providing our loop power for today and we have our heart communicator. Now the one thing to note is that for the purpose of this demonstration, first of all, we're going to leave the transmitter in linear function to see the difference between linear and square root. So if we take this down to zero flow, we have close to four milliamps. And our uh, transmitter says it's just outside its own range. So now we're going to put it up to 25%, which would be two and a half gallons per minute and we get five milliamps and it says that we are reading six inches differential and five milliamp output now we're going to go up to five gallons per minute A little bit jumpy there. Five gallons per minute, which gives us eight milliamps. Now, as you can see, our flow is at 50%, and yet our output is only 25%. 25% of four to 20 is eight, but zero to 10 gallons per minute, we're at 50%. So we have 50% flow, and we only have a 25% output. This is in the linear, function. So now we're going to go up and check out the 7.5. So at 7.5 gallons per minute, we are getting almost 50%. We're getting 13 milliamps. So now, and there's our differential pressure. So at 75% flow of our calibrated flow, we are getting almost 50% output. And now we go up to 100%. And 100% flow gives us a 100% output. Now this is in the linear function. That is why we need to have a square root extractor. So now let's quickly, save that from going out of range, let's quickly go to our heart communicator and let us change our output from linear to square root. Send the data. Okay, now we get back to our process variable. There we go. Okay, so now we go back down to our zero, and our zero is going to be the same as before zero just under zero, it's 3.93. And now, we're gonna go back to two and a half 
gallons per minute. Now it's very finicky here. It's jumping around quite a lot. Wow, it's hard to get, but that's close. So at 25% flow, we now have 25% output. This is due to this is due to the fact that we have our square root extractor on here. So now we're going to come up to 50% 50% flow and that gives us 50% output. Now, no surprise, we're going to go up to 75% and we know what we're expecting to get. So there's close to 75% and we have exactly 75% output. Things are looking great. This is exactly what we're expecting. And now we come up to a hundred percent. And we have a hundred percent output. All right, let's take a quick look to see what that looks like on the board. All right, so now let's look at what actually happened over at the station. We're going to go milliamp versus percent flow. So of course we have 4 to 20 milliamps. And we have 0 to 100% flow. Now, 25, 50, 75, 100. We have 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. What happened over there was what we would like to see is a linear output going from 0% flow to 0% milliamp and 0% output. From 100% input to 100% output. But in reality, with flow, because flow is not linear, we got a square rooted output. This is the natural curve of flow. Flow is naturally square rooted. And so in order for us to then have a linear output, we have to use a square root extractor. Okay, so as we've seen over there, we had not a linear output. The first thing that we did over there when we had a linear function on our transmitter, we were wanting to see a linear function between our input to our output. We were inputting flow, differential flow. We were outputting 4 to 20 milliamps. But as we saw over there, what happened was, was the differential pressure across an orifice plate, it acts like this. At 50%, we got 25% output. At 75%, we got 75% flow, we got 50% output. Now, that is something to look at and say, wow, Flow is not linear. So in order to get flow linear, we have to add a square root extractor. Now, by adding that square root extractor, it takes um, what you're actually getting as input and it overlays it with a square rooted function to then give you the linear output. Now, why is this important? Because if you leave a transmitter in a square root function and you actually have a linear input like level, you will end up getting a square rooted output. So if you go to look at the level of a tank 
and you see that your output has this wild curve on it, you know that your square root extractor function on the transmitter is on. If you're doing um, flow, like differential flow, and you get this curve as your output, you know that you have your linear function on and you need to square root it. When you're doing flow, you need to square root. When you are doing level, you need to keep your output on a linear function. So when we overlay our flow, the transmitter is going to output this on top of what we actually have, and it'll give us a linear output. That is truly what the transmitter is doing. If you want to learn more about square root, there's lots of videos of how this is affected by Bernoulli's principles and how the flow going from a larger diameter to a smaller diameter, it changes in pressure. And these are all calculated values that we can do. I hope this helps.